What is going on guys? Today we're going to be building a simple DCF. This is a simpler version of a DCF uh, compared to last video. Last video was more of an advanced DCF. Um, this is more of a simpler DCF. Even though they are both considered a simple DCF, this is a very fast and simple DCF. Let's get right into it. So first things first, we're going to make sure that these are all 50 size. I always like to make it that 50 size. So let's do... Uh, We'll give it like 20 spaces. Yeah, this is a very fast and simple DCF. Obviously, the simpler we get, the more inaccurate it is. Or not even inaccurate, it's just it's not as uh, accurate to our the intrinsic value of the company as it could be. Doesn't mean it's wrong, but it's not as close as it can be. Like the last video is gonna be closer to the intrinsic value of Google, for example, then this video compared to like, if let's say we're doing Facebook today, it's not gonna be as close or as accurate as you know, the simpler you get, if that makes sense. So the first thing, let's just make this like, mm, perp, uh, blue works. Let's go white, let's go DCF. Well, let's actually make this entire thing 14 and molded. Perfect. All right, so now we got DCF. Uh, let's go all the way out to like S. So S, we'll make this yellow. Looks like Ukraine, let's do it. Um, ticker, growth rate. Let's make this like there. Cash flow estimates. go the year and then we'll go free cash flow the year market cap and then multiple you guys will see why these are here in a second I'm just making this out uh, real quick And then we have our terminal value uh, DCF so we're gonna want a discounted let's mm, let's put it over here discounted rate the year again uh, that's fine all right so we got basically everything that we need to start it let's go Facebook um, now let's make sure our formula is correct Let's see what we want to do. All right, so cash flow estimates for 2022. Um, we're just going to use Yahoo for this. This is fine. It's not going to be that accurate, but you guys are going to get the gist of what's going on. Uh, cash flow estimates for 2022. For Facebook, we have 39,812. So I'm going to write this entire thing out 39,812. One. Uh, that's fine. I'll leave it like that. All right, so our cash flow, actually, let's write the whole thing out. Let's do it. Two, three, one, two, three. Let's make these all numbers. Perfect. Now, we're gonna go like this. We're gonna equal this times our growth rate. Zero, and we're just gonna bring this one. Well, let's go to the year as well. 2022 equals this plus one. 2023, and we're gonna go all the way down to 2032. One, two, three, four. There we go. And then we'll bring this all the way down as well. Growth rate for Facebook for the next 10 years. Let's just pretend like it's gonna grow three and a half percent per annum for the next 10 years. So we're gonna do point so since it's 30 or 30 point let's see three and a half percent so now you're going to be 1.035 because that is um you have to put it like this so it counts because if you put the growth rate as 3.5 percent on there it's not going to calculate it right so you have to put 1.035 if it's 10 percent it's going to be 1.1 1 .1, um because that's exactly how this thing works you guys should have learned this in high school. So then the growth rate 1.035. 
now let's make sure this is remember the money signs keeps it at c5 see look these are gonna be like c7 c8 c9 we want to keep it at c5 so that's why we put the money signs so now boom so this is the free cash flow estimates for Facebook by the year 2032 but remember you would rather have a thousand dollars now than a thousand dollars later and now we're gonna get to that in a second that's gonna be our discounted rate so now we're done with that this is the only number that we took from something so let's make this green so we took this straight from Yahoo everything else is calculated <clears throat> now the year let's go 2021 and let's just minus one so I don't feel like doing that I right, actually so go 2018 all right now free cash flow for so now this is something that we pull right from Yahoo um, for 2021 you guys should be able to see this like it was sell you the uh, free cash flow I'm literally gonna put those numbers into the right here for Facebook so 39, 39, 116, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. You don't have to put all these zeros in, like our DCF that we made the other day on Google. We didn't have to do all that, but for this one, just to make sure, like I don't have to do any more math. I'm just gonna add it, just to add it. So 39, 23, 6, 3, 2, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. Uh, 21, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, and then 15, 3, 5, 9, 0, 0, 0, 1, 2, 3. Now, market cap, I like to keep it the same month. Um, I'll show you guys where I find the market cap because obviously you can only see the current market cap. So, what you want to do is go to, let's see, go to this website that I'm going to show you guys in a second. So here is Facebook's market cap, right? This is macro trends. I like to keep it the same month. So you guys could either do it from like, I like to do it exactly uh, a year from now, each year. So a year from now is, or a year before, so 2021, May 3rd. So I like to go around like that May, let's go May 15th for each one. So you see how it says 900 billion? And then for 2020, we're gonna go down to 670 billion. So I like to keep doing it every single year at the same exact month, so it's more accurate. So let's go market cap, 850, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Big numbers. Let's go make this a number. Perfect. Then the next one was 670. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Now, obviously, you don't have to do all these um, zeros like that, but I like to do it just to get the end result um, so I don't have to add zeros at the end. 450, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Let's go. All right, next, you're going to take your free cash flow from the history and the market cap. Uh, and then you're going to find your multiple by dividing the market cap and the free cash flow. So all you have to do is this divided by this. It's the same thing. Let's move these over. Next, we're going to make uh, average. So let's make this like red. Okay, I just actually did that. Let's make this red. This is our average. Does it look better white? Yes. Average. So now we're going to take the average of these. 2633. Terminal value. So now you're going to times uh, the end of 2032, which is this. You're going to times that by 10 to get your terminal value that's not discounted yet. So times this by 10. <clears throat> D15. Yep. Alright, so now let's make this. Mm, let's see if that's right. I don't look that right. Mm, 
No, 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 I did that wrong. Not by 10. I lied. By our multiple. I don't know why I was thinking by 10. I'm at J10. Yes, perfect. So our multiple times it by that. So the terminal value. Now discounted rate. So usually, um, I like to keep it around like 15%. So some people like to do 12.5%. Some people like to do 15%. I like to be a little bit more conservative. So 15%, basically what this means is uh, this is like the average return that you want to get from investing an in individual stock just because like bonds yield you around like five to six percent uh a little bit under that and then investing in s&p 500 gives you around like eight to ten percent annually so if it's even the only way it's going to be worth it to you to invest in individual stocks like this is if you get 15 percent right you're not going to get you know 10 percent when the s&p 500 gives you eight percent because you just have way more risk and not enough reward you just invest in s&p 500 so with that being said, this is our discounted cash flow. Um, we're gonna put this numbers into here. Essentially, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take 2022 and I'm gonna use the same exact number. So plus this by one, 2023. Let's go all the way down to 2032 again. So now this is gonna equal this. And then next, for each year, we're gonna do this times 1.15, or no, 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 divided by 1.15 to the year, right? So, actually, no, we're going this way. D6. So, we're gonna do that. D6, 1.1 to the year. And perfect. All right, let's make these all numbers first. So now, it's essentially gonna take one, two. Oh, does it make me do it myself? Two, three, four. There's definitely is an easier way to do this, but five, six. Seven. I'm just raising it to the um, the year out. Eight, nine, ten. All right, there we go. So that is discounted to the year. This just means that I took it from here. This just means I took it from Yahoo. <coughs> These numbers are from Yahoo. Let's make this organized. Numbers are from our macro trends. Perfect. So now this is looking good. Now we're gonna take this number and times it by our average multiple. So this times this. This is our discounted terminal value. Uh, let's make this a number again. So this is discounted. This is our terminal value of free cash flow. This is our discounted terminal value of free cash flow. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to find the intrinsic value through this entire thing. So, that being said, let's make this green. Um, so next, in order to find the terminal value of, or the intrinsic value of everything, we're going to do all the discounted rate cash flow for all 10 years. So we're going to add them up. So we're going to do sum of that plus our discounted rate which is going to be L7 we're going to add those up 638 let's make this a number so now this is the market cap of the future growth of Facebook with a 3.5% per annum now, obviously, this is why, you know, the more research is necessary to determine the growth rate because it relies heavily on the growth rate because if I change it to 5%, so watch, ready? If I change this to 5%, look how it, it, you know, it went up another 100 billion, right? If I change this to 10%, 
so this is already in a trillions so this is why it solely depends on you know the growth rate as well um so this is why you know you have to do your research beforehand on the industry that you're working with very conservative with three and a half percent um i feel like so next we're gonna find these shares outstanding so all you're gonna do is you know go on yahoo and then find the shares outstanding or shares issued so let's just go with uh two okay so two seven four one one two three one two three so this is how many shares issued so now we're going to divide them this divided by this 233 is the intrinsic value of Facebook now obviously you don't want to buy a hundred dollar bill for a hundred dollar bill I mean for a hundred dollars because then you know where's your money being made at so what you want to do is I like to pay 70 cents per dollar of intrinsic value so 233 we're going to times that by 0.7 which means that we are paying 70 cents per dollar of intrinsic value which gives us a grand total of around 163 dollars and 10 cents which is you know pretty great so 163 right now facebook is trading at 195 yeah so 195 <clears throat> on facebook if you believe these numbers right the growth rate so now if the growth rate was for example what's yahoo say growth rate for yahoo it says in the next five years it's seven and a half percent let's go this is say seven and a half percent even though that's the next five years so usually i would say like five percent but again this is just you have your own research with that let's say it's seven and a half percent for the next 10 years that means that the intrinsic value is 311 and 218 you would pay uh right now for facebook which is uh, i don't see that how three i don't think there'd be even 311 i don't even think that's close i feel like the intrinsic value for facebook would have to be mm, i would say 250 so let's just give it a five percent to keep it in the middle yeah, so like 260, 180 to pay. I, that's pretty, pretty good. 180 on Facebook. I feel like that number is a little bit more accurate. So this is a simple DCF compared to the last video. This is very simple. Now, obviously, this is just like if you, I don't even know. I don't know. I wouldn't use this over you know my other video, but again, you know if you want to just rely heavily on like that growth rate and the free cash flow multiple then this might be a simpler dcf for you maybe you like to look at um the qualitative analysis on companies more than a quantitative so you don't really care about like these numbers and stuff like that so you just want to get a rough estimate on the intrinsic value but um you really do need to look at both anyway so the more research you put in the more you're gonna get out of it if you want to take uh, you know the simpler route because you want to save time then go for it but you know obviously the more work you put in the more you'll get out so if you guys enjoyed this video make sure you guys leave a like comment down below if you guys want to see more of these videos and I'll see you guys in the next video